Hi, welcome to a hot, muggly, rainy day in Chesterfield. I'm trying to film in between the showers, just trying to get this bit sorted. So bear with me if uh, it looks a bit out of sync. Thanks a lot for all you guys watching, but if you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe down, uh, button down at the bottom corner. If anybody wants any of the Akoi Enthusiast logoed merchandise, again, check out the shop in the description below. And also, if anybody's interested in any uh, pond fillers, any uh, koi, the ones that I grew from Cutterbuck last year are 13 months old now. And if anybody wants any, check out the videos on Facebook page. And if anybody likes anything, just give me a shout. One thing that I'm going to talk about today is flow rates. I often get asked the question of what's the ideal flow rate for my pond? It's X amount of litres. And again, it all depends on a lot of factors, including the feeding rate and the stocking levels. Awazi, in general, recommend that you turn your pond over once every one and a half hours. And their filter units are optimum flow rates are based on those minimum maximum flow rates. But again, how do you measure your flow rate? People talk about the flow rates being the, uh, the pump, what the pump says, I've got a 10,000 litre pump. But the specs on a 10,000 litre pump are based on zero head and running at 100%. By zero head, that is the distance the pump, the pump is pumping above the height of the water to the outlet. So on my bottom drain, it pumps through the bottom drain, it goes through the filter and it's pumped through at low level. So there's close to zero head on there, there'll be a bit of back pressure. The backy shower, again, is probably two metres above the height of the pump. So that has got a two metre head. But then you must also take into consideration the length of the pipe and the diameter of the pipe. The filter is fed by a four inch bottom drain, but the outlet is inch and a half that goes to the pump. So it's pulling through an inch and a half pipe and then it's pushing it approximately three, me uh, three metres to the side of the pond and again three metres down the pond into low level. So you've got at least six metres. But again, for every bend or every joint or every piece of equipment on there, you're going to have more of a restriction. So it's not uncommon to expect 30 to 50% loss of flow rate. I managed to search on Amazon and eBay for an inline flow meter. These are electronic flow meters or fuel meters, but you can change the calibration for the K factor to accommodate water. So what we're going to do is open up one of these and test them out and compare them to the flow of the pumps. It is a one and a half inch BSP threaded fitting with the flow direction on it and it can measure litres used, total litres and also flow rate in litres per minute. I did have a quick flick through and it will convert to gallons, pints and quarters. Not that it's any use but for the sake of this video I'm going to stick to litres. What I'm going to do is I've got a section of pipe I'm going to cut out and by hiding the BSP connector on there on each end and then two rubber boots I can fit that in nicely without causing any issues. Make sure that you get the flow rate the right direction and it should give us a good idea. I'll give it a quick calibration first and then we'll install it. The design is based on the GMI uh, flow meter which basically has got a turbine inside that measures the water that goes around and underneath here you've got some sort of uh, sensor that will convert that into a display. If I press and hold the two buttons it will then, to five seconds, the L will flash and if I flick through it changes to gallons, quarts, pints or litres. And the 1650 is a factory calibration, I'm not sure if it's for fuels or what it's for uh, as such. So I've connected the unit to a 10,000 Pond Expert Veriflow pump and it comes factory set, I'm not sure if it's for fuel, diesel, oil, or whatever it is. But what I'm going to do is run it, test it, see what it's saying on the readout, and then put in the correct K factor for the uh, flow for water. So I'll put it in. Shut 
sure if you can still see that. And the pump speed's ramping up. So that's 100% and it's pulling 80 watts on the pump and that's saying it's 100, 100 litres a minute but at 10,000 litres an hour should be 166 litres so we're going to the calibration we're going to the calibration it's basically press and hold the button for 8 seconds And then we change that to five, five, two, I think it's two, three, five, five. So press on our freight seconds. We set it to zero. We'll put that back in the water. Try and keep it as low as possible. I think you can see that. And turn the pump on. That's up to full speed. That's now reading 165. 164, 166 litres per minute, which should equate to 10,000 litres. So that unit is now calibrated. Like I say, if you press the, dis uh, press the display, it resets. If you press calibrate, it will show you total amount of litres pumped and the actual litres pumping at a time, or you can have it on flow rate. So we'll connect that to the system and we'll see what it, uh, it tells us. Just to recap, what we've got is the outlet for the ORZ Coffee Clear Premium Compact which is a reducer to a valve, sweeps around the next band into the pump. The pump then feeds it through the UV and then there's a branch there for the air source heat pump that's currently going outside and then comes back in and continues that way. Where I've turned the valve off and the rubber there is where we're going to install the unit. That's through the wall there, through a sweeping 90 there and then through some inch and a half solvent well pipe there. It then goes underneath the gravel, underneath the planters, along the edge of the pond and then you can see a double union ball lever valve there and it does another sweeping 90 into the pond. And again it's a midway return so it's under 24 inch of water. So I'm switching the pump on, if you leave it upside down but you'll see the flow rate go up. It's set to 100% so that says we're doing 121, 122 litres per minute. I'm sure, I can see that, but with the air source heat pump, it says 182. I'm going to open the air source heat pump, and you can see it go up to 210 to 12 litres per minute. Close it again and back down to 180, 182. Thanks a lot for watching this video this far. I hope I've explained it enough in uh, easy enough terms as it can get very technical with the flow rates, coefficient of friction, 
K, fa uh, K factors. But what I'm trying to get across is whatever your pump says it is pumping may not always be the correct flow rate that you're going to get. So it's worth taking into consideration the size of the pipe and if I did this again I would go up to at least two inch pipe returns rather than inch and a half. A lot of equipment is inch and a half uh, as standard but some of the new bigger pumps etc are a lot bigger. Like I say if you're still watching this video and you've not subscribed please hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. If you've enjoyed the video please hit the like button. If you've got any questions, any comments, anything you want to know, please write them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. On a sunny day in Chesterfield, thanks a lot for watching. Happy ponding.